Well, I think they're kind of behind the curve in terms of considering the impact. I mean, I, I talked about both the promise and the peril. It's now almost 20 years ago. And I think you go through three phases in considering uh, strong AI or any of these uh, dramatic new information technologies as they get to be very powerful. One is delight at the opportunity to overcome age-old afflictions and problems of humanity, then alarm that, whoa, these things could be dangerous. Biotechnology, for example, could repro will is reprogramming our biology to overcome disease, but it could also be used by a bioterrorist to create a new killer virus. And, uh, so then the third, uh, I think, final phase is to realize We've always had promise and peril with technology. Fire was great, kept us warm, cooked our food for the first time, but also burned down our villages, but we managed to live with it. And overall, technology has provided a far better quality of life than humanity has ever had, and that's a continuing process. And we have, in fact, a moral imperative to continue on this path, because there's still a lot of suffering in the world, and the only technology is gonna overcome it. Uh, we have to reap the promise while controlling the peril. A good example of how we've actually succeeded so far in doing that, say in biotech, 40 years ago there was the Asilomar conference uh, to come up with ethical guidelines how to keep biotechnology safe while reaping the promise. And that was actually long before either the promise or the peril was a reality. And we now have dramatic uh, health benefits coming from biotech. That It's a trickle today, it's gonna to be a flood over the next decade. And so far the number of people who've been hurt by the peril of biotechnology has been zero. That doesn't mean, okay, we took care of that one, we can cross it off our concern list. We have to keep being vigilant, the technology gets more sophisticated, so we have to reinvent the guidelines. We just had an Asilomar conference on AI ethics to do the same thing with artificial intelligence. So I think it's a good model for how to keep these technologies uh, safe. Uh, I think the concerns are valid. I mean, I don't dismiss them. But the kind of dangers we've seen in futurist AI dystopian movies, where it's the AI versus a brave band of humans for control of humanity is not realistic. The idea that we're merging with AI is not some uh, concept in the future, it's happening now. Uh, you know, when I say that your smartphone is an extension of you and that you, you can't do your work without it, and if you leave it at home, you're only, you can't really function fully intelligently, people really accept that today. Even just a few years ago, people, that, that did not seem realistic. That seemed like a very futuristic concept. It's already happened. We're already dependent on this technology. Nobody can do their work or get their education without these brain extenders we have now. And we're much more intimate with them. We do all kinds of intimate work on them and we carry them in our pockets. When I was a student at MIT, I had to take my bicycle to get to the one computer on campus. And they're gonna go inside our bodies and brains. I mean, I actually swallowed a computer a few weeks ago to, that went through my body and did some diagnostic work. It came out good. Uh, and uh, that we're gonna increasingly merge with these technologies. They will go inside our brains, they'll connect our brain to, to the cloud, uh, we'll have direct connection, and not just to do things like search and translate, but to actually extend the power of our thinking and uh, give us more neocortical modules and more hierarchy to our neocortex, which will make us smarter. We, we got more neocortex two million years ago when we got these big foreheads, that was enough, that was, uh, it was a one-shot increase in our neocortex, but that was enough to enable us to create language and art and music. Every human culture we've ever discovered has music. No other primate has music because they don't have the, this additional neocortex we got two million years ago. We're gonna do it again by connecting our neocortex to the cloud, to synthetic neocortex in the cloud, and basically get again more neocortex, and that will be an enabling factor to create more profound music, to be funnier, to be more artistic, uh, to basically enhance the qualities of humanity that we uh, value.